Well, welcome guys to yours truly, Desk Islander. Today I actually not got a battle for you, and I hope you survive that. I actually went on to make a list of my top 10 favorite Pokemons, and I based them on design, uh, the way I used them in battles, and just overall uh, memories, you know, having fond memories of a lot of these Pokes, really. I mean, it's kind of weird thinking about it, but Pokemon is such a weird game because you definitely have six partners that, you know, you're trying to win a battle, and I don't know, it feels very real at that, those moments. When you're good at Pokemon, you pretty much just feel like each Poke are somewhere or another a partner, and you feel for them. And after doing my Nuzlocke, I definitely got that feeling that, you know, even though there are just digital sprites, you still care for them. It's really weird. I know it's it sounds very weird for maybe a few of you, but I think most of you will understand that playing Pokemon and having a teammates is it's a huge thing. It's a it feels like a team sport, and I do get why people get so invested. So anyway, um if you like this, please comment down below on this because I did like doing this. I've been doing this for three, four days, you know, just uh, writing down stuff that I want to say about each poke. And, well, it was kind of hard to narrow it down to 10 pokes. I do like a lot of them. And, like I said, doing the Nuzlocke pretty much screwed me over because I did like a few pokes there that I couldn't put on a list. Because then I will put them for the wrong reasons, in my opinion. But anyway, you know, let's actually get to it. Uh, what is more to say? Well, I should probably do like generic thing. Like, you know, this is my opinions. And uh, if you have a different opinion, then please announce that. Please write down your own favorite Pokemons down below. <laughs> it will be really fun to read that, actually. So anyway, guys, let's get coming in at number 10 is Daywatt. And I guess not a lot of you actually would expect that, considering that Samurott is... Well, in the same tier, actually. It's in the NU tier. But I always like Daywatt because... Just look at the design. It's it's an otter. It definitely looks more like an otter than Samurott does. And it got that dual shell thing. Like a, like a samurai, I guess. So, I don't know. I always like the design. It's definitely it's hard to use in battle, even with Eviolite. I've been trying Sword Dance, Aqua Jet Set. It rarely works. But, you know what? <laughs> that hardly matters. Like I said, I truly like this poke, and I don't know, um, I did, just to say it like this, I didn't play too much of Gen 4, but when I came to Gen 5, I was so glad when I took Oshawott that was such a like covering poke with both Exisor, Grass Knot, it could do a lot of things. Very versatile poke, sadly a little when it comes to the metagame, but still, the sign is good, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it actually, not too advanced to start off here. <laughs> And coming in at number 9 is Explode. And I do believe a few of you thought it was gonna be higher up on the list. For you that followed me since the beginning, I used Explode as an avatar poke uh, when I started off with Poketubing. I always liked it since Gen 3 because of, uh, well, it's design obviously, and uh, it just had uh, like one of those good coverage. Normal wasn't like split into attacks and defense back then, so. Having the flamethrower ice beam set up was actually somewhat good on Explode. Uh, sadly though, um, and I'm gonna be real honest here, it lacks defenses and speed. So it wasn't until Gen 5 that I think it picked up its game with Hyper Voice and Choice Scar for specs. But it definitely like flourished when it comes to Gen 6 once it got the boom burst. And that was actually the reason I <laughs> chose to um, Use it on my own, actually, back in the beginning. I had it as an anti lead, and well, just boom burst everything really with a scarf instead of uh, specs. Pretty much outspeeding the most of the guys in metagame, and often one shot them, or at least doing like, around 80%. So, yeah, I really have a founding memories of these pokes, and, uh, or this poke, and I like using it still. Uh, I went through how much I used it, and I used him in after 220 battles. I used him in around 30, so that puts him around 8% of usage. So not too much actually, but when I use him, it's <laughs> it's always a fun time. It does die very very easily, but that's hard, hardly the problem. It's like I said, real fun using. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at this picture. <laughs> That's pretty much how I feel about it when I'm battling. Like, he's just gonna like... <laughs> like, ramble and just shout things against the opponent to just go away. <laughs> well, anyway, guys. Um, let's actually be off to the next one. Well... 
This was actually kind of hard between number 8 and number 7. But yeah, Chestnut is definitely definitely my <laughs> one of my favorite walls. And I think in the entire metagame. I was somewhat upset actually that it became a UU probe because I was so sure that people didn't use it. Um, I know it has that friend that Venusaur had and Meganium and Torterra, like being that bulky poke that could just retaliate. And being that it can learn spikes and spiky shield pretty much means that it can just, you know, shield and set up and pretty much just watch the Pokemon suffer. <laughs> It's very great with lead seeds and uh, doing the spike shield and just letting the turns go. It's so bulky too, so you can take a few hits. Uh, I named my Chestnut Chester, um, and I did like uh, when Chespin and Quillin was in introduced. I was never one of those that thought that Quillin looked weird. I actually thought it was kind of fitting. <laughs> Considering I was definitely thinking about, you know, a, a hazelnut when I saw Chespin, so being that Quillin became a nut just made sense to me and it isn't that bad in uh, the metagame either Quilladin I mean can you see like rather well like so yeah props on that and, and other than that I mean I used him a lot on my hazard team uh, and I think he was around 10% of all the battles I have have I have a chest not in my team and it does work really well it walls down the, the like physical pokes you're gonna use earthquake you're taking them well leeching off and well, then just watch them die slowly, uh, because Quilladin is or no, <laughs> Chestnut is so hard to kill. You need to have either a special move that it weaks to, like a fire or ice beam, or having uh, a talent flame that can go with acrobatics or brave bird to take it out. It, other than that, it's actually somewhat hard to kill, uh, and I like using it. I think it's a good poke, and it definitely belongs in UU, where it actually it works rather well. It really does. And coming in at number 7 is Furfro. Yeah, a few guys who've been following my NAS like know pretty much well why I had to put, put Furfro here. He was named Beatfist back then, and well, he pretty much made sure to actually won the NAS lock or completing it. Uh, or almost. I did actually lose in the end of the Elite for really, but I decided to still count it as a win. He died like very very late in that Nuzlocke and pretty much went downhill after that so anyway besides that I mean Furfro is such a good poke overall for being very very defensive can set up either Toxic or Thunder Wave and with Cotton Guard um, and uh, Rocky Helmet combo it definitely makes sure that you can make short work out of uh, physical attackers and it works very 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 well I mean there's no way going around it. It's one of the better pokes from the, this gen, actually. Plus, you got the um, retaliation move and it got U turn, so it can actually hit rather hard and then get out too. So, yeah. I mean, other than that, I always like the design of the um, Furfro being just a dog that you can redesign, and I think the black one, yeah, looks really cool or a shiny one. I always got the, like, the vibe of um, Sonic character out of it, either Sonic or Knuckles. You know, got that uh, nose and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. Very fun memories. Nothing like real special to it. It's more than it does have that um, defensive combo that works so well with it. So yeah, that <laughs> I think that will cover this up really. And also props to uh, my friend Cleo, who gave me the shiny one. <laughs> so I've been using it for some time now, and it works really well. So I'm glad to have it in my team. He is definitely as essential as he was back in the Nuzlocke. Yeah, now we're starting Flygon. One of the best designs ever for a Pokemon, if you ask me. The Dragon Ground um, uh, typing is so good too, because it's one of the best like dual stab you can have. Earthquake, having that one stab is huge, and Flygon is fast enough to utilize either Choice Band or using Choice Scuff together with U-Turn to get the flexibility and momentum in battles. Um, I mean, sure, we got the eye shot, which going into one shot it in worst case scenario, but that's that's just an inconvenience. Flygon covers so much, and it works as a special set too with flamethrower, Giga Drain, Earth Power. It's it's tremendously good. I, I like this poke so much. And well, other than that, I mean, come on, we we need this guy to get a Mega Evolution this gen or for the next game here. I can't believe they ripped us out of that because Flygon needs. 
high evolution that just boosts its attacks. It's definitely fast enough. It doesn't need to worry about taking damage. It can just make sure to actually do more damage. So we need we need this to happen. I uh, damn it. And also make sure the flygon at least learns fire punch. It now does need that physical ascension on it. Man. Yeah, as you can see guys, I really like Flygon. Why can't it learn Dragon Dance? It's so mean too, it, it, it sincerely is. I liked it since the Ruby Sapphire days. I had it on my team because of that stab to Earthquake and being a safe switching into other ground moves was great back then. It still are. Um, other than that, I mean, give this guy a Mega Evolution, come on, Game Freak, don't do this to us. Wow, number 4, Sesame Toad. I bet you didn't see this one coming. I really thought it was gonna rank higher on my list. I actually did. But, well, thinking about it, I mean, I have other posts that just are as good, if not better. And um, that doesn't mean that Sesame Toad is bad. Um, I used Sesame Toad for, I think, 72% of all my matches. That is kinda sick. It's been around for at least 3 out of 4 battles is in my team. And just to have it said, really, um, I use Sesame Toad in two different ways. Uh, I have a special set which I call Lizard, and a physical set that I call Resard. And nothing special about them, really, more than the set. Uh, the special set is great in with Swift Swim capabilities. Uh, use a Scald, Earth Power, Grass Knot to take on other like uh, <laughs> uh, Sesame Toads, and well, Sludge Bomb just to uh, deal with whatever comes in if the like Grass Bomb coming in. It works very well. I have it in conjunction with Life Orb, so it's definitely bound to die. Not as like long surviving as the physical set, which is my Resort, uh, which has a Water Absorb instead of Swift Swim, uh, using a Salt Vest, and had Drain Punch, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and uh, Poison Jab. That set has been working very well for me lately, both for the like, safe switching to a water move, but also because Sesame Toad is four times weak to Grass. It's great to actually have a poke to have um, the sap super ability in conjunction with the boo choice band or choice scarf to just retaliate as hard as possible. So yeah, that's about it actually. Um, he's pretty much a remnant of my uh, rain team back when I was starting off, and well, it's been around ever since because it just it covers so much uh, with drain punch and the salt vest just makes it so good and so so good at surviving really if i have to say anything very very impressive poke i never thought i would uh, like this more than swamper but it grew on me so much lately and it is because the abilities are just more like more useful i guess is the right word so i'm really glad to see that well that it grew on me so much i actually used him as an avatar poke for a while because let's face it it was a great sweeper back when Bristol was allowed uh, but now it's just just walls every electric type and he can take a grass knot with an assault vest so yeah yeah I like this guy <laughs> I really do and at number four we have my most used Pokemon of them all with 92% Hillisk <laughs> or Saladin and I don't know how much I need to really explain this guy um, for those who gone up against me with me using it they always had a tough time because he had the power Ice and Grass Knot and Hyper Beam and Volt Switch. It's fast enough to utilize um, the like hit and run capabilities. And actually, I just trained a hill is just for fun. I needed something with uh, either like dry skin, so I trained up a Toxic Croak and I trained up uh, a hill is just so that I can benefit the rain while I was doing my rain team. And he he has been sticking around ever since. He doesn't have the best IVs, but I don't want to, like, <laughs> uh, breed for another um, ice. So I have, I think, my guy here has had four perfect IVs and some lacklustering defensive IVs, but I don't mind. It isn't supposed to get hit anyway. So, yeah. I don't know how many pokes this guy has killed. He, he is a monster. He really is, and it's definitely one of the best implementations here in the, in the newest gen. I was really thinking that having the fighting weakness and doing like being one-shotted by Max Punch was going to work against it, but you know, after being around with this guy for a while, I just realized that if you know you're gonna get killed, 
you might as well go for the hyper beam and get a hyper beam stab is so amazing it does so much damage and I mean if you don't want to go with the hyper beam or hidden power you always have dark pulse and surf which is great strong attacks that complements Helisk typing very well and yeah I actually think that's about it I mean amazing coke I love using him uh, I don't know more to say I'm so glad that this book was invented because it's so good. It really is. And at number 3 we have Drogology. Yeah, this is definitely my favorite poke of the newest generation. It ah man, I mean what a great Pokemon. Having that high special defenses with a decent defense being just able to wall whatever comes in that is special attacking one. Plus the typing makes sure that grass is, well, nerfed, water is nerfed, fire is nerfed, it can deal with almost anything. It can take an earthquake, you need to have something that can flourish in that environment. But other than that, I mean, Drogaldi is, wow. It's just such a good Pokemon, I had it on my team when I was first playing around with X and Y. Having Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, uh, Dragon Pulse, and Slush Bomb, if I remember correctly. What's it, Surf? Never mind. Such a good utility poke where you can pretty much do anything. Though I didn't realize until very late in the metagame that Dragaldi could learn Toxic Spike and actually do somewhat well with that. And that was my first like competitive Dragaldi. I named her Sylvie. Uh, it was Dragon Tail, Poison Tail, just to deal with fairies that can wall the Dragon Tail, setting up Toxic Spikes and Protect. And I was thinking first of Substitute, Rest or Protect, but Protect is better because you can always scout if the Pokemon has a, an attack that is super effective. If they don't have it, then you can set up more stock to Spike or just will go right for the Dragon Tail. It worked so well that yeah, that I had this that poke around for almost 60% of my metagame battles. Um, the reason I isn't using it right now is, well, because people <laughs> knew about it. <laughs> Is, like I said, it's a very good poke and covers a lot of ground. But I do, did actually train another one. Um, and this guy I was called Marble. And it is the Dragology with the choice specs. So it has the Draco Meteor, Scald, Thunderbolt, and uh, Shadow Ball. And it works equally as well because people aren't expecting to get retaliated with a big hit. And being that it's specs, pretty, pretty sure makes it that it's gonna hurt no matter what. So those two sets have been working for me really well, and other than that, I mean, Drogoldi has one of the best designs, like I said there, and uh, I don't know, I, I really like it. I just missed uh, adaptability, I hope it gets released soon, because that will work much better with Dragon Tail, Poison Tail setup. Even though it isn't like physically offensive, it still can pack a punch, because are you weak, it's still double damage. So yeah, that will be about Dragaldi. Great poke, one of my favorites, definitely. And coming in at number two is, without a doubt in my mind, Tropius. Definitely one of my favorite pokes ever. I love when it was introduced back in Gen 3. Sadly, it was hard to use, because back then uh, flying was actually only physical and grass was only special. There was no split until Gen 4. So back then you only had it for, um, well, Apply and cut. Yeah, it was very lackluster back then, but it, it at least grew during the generations. And I was really glad back in I think Gen 5 when it was actually starting to become really good when it can when you can breed Dragon Dance to it and it could learn Leaf Blade. I know it isn't like made for being a physical sweeper. I mean, I see when people using it using with Air Slash, Lead Seed, and being just stally with the Harvest. I like that setup, but I want to use this poke as a sweeper. I love using it with nature power, with the barrel that reduces ice damage because it gets ice based uh, back. So, having harvest together with those kind of berries and dragon dance, it's just a blast, really. Um, don't go with protect, go directly for roost because roost, if you can set up a dragon dance and then roost, you are pretty much in a, like, a setup where you can go with first because you're in around 300 speed which is enough for outspeeding most pokes, so it works really well actually. And you can also choose, you have to always have Leaf Blade, but you can go for Aerolades, you can go for Earthquake, but I like using Nature Power with Ice Base because 
Well, it takes people off guard almost every time, and you can't do anything against fire types anyway, so you might as well get out of there. Or, you know, having Earthquake instead of Leaf Blade, but I wouldn't do that. But other than that, I mean, definitely one of my favorite designs for so long. And the Pokémon itself is, well, it's actually somewhat good. I hope they make a Mega Blue out of this Pokes, and I really want to see them not change the typing. I mean, I don't mind the typing as it is right now. But then do need to at least make sure that it learns another flying move or at least give it the ability to fix that. Because I do believe, consider Mega Evolution is going to take away <laughs> like the item anyway. So the harvest is like nothing really to work with. But thick fat could actually benefit it. Then now it gets as bulky, if not bulkier than Venusaur. If you get the right split in its um, <laughs> defensive capabilities. But yeah, I think that is something I want to see this. Pokemon get because Tropius is a great I named mine Trombius and other than that I've used him for 20% of my battles so not too much um, as I said it, it is somewhat gimmicky to use but it doesn't mean that I don't like using it I, I really do <laughs> always like setting up dragon dances and just pressure the opponents so anyway guys now we're off for number one and I think most of you have a good idea what that poke is yeah I know guys, it's a little anticlimactic, I know, but still, I couldn't, I couldn't take any other poke. Steelix is, it's just such a good poke, I mean, I have heard that one around since Gen 2. Uh, back then I had Curse, Earthquake, Rock Slide and Rest, together with Chesterberry, and it worked so well back then, and back in Gen 3, uh, you couldn't actually, or you couldn't teach it Curse, so back then I just had Explosion and just, you know, did some damage and then exploded. And it's The thing with Steelix is it is such a good defensive poke, like you can switch it in against weakness damage and it still can take it rather well. And back in Gen 5 I actually started to use, I mean I went through that, uh, or kind of skipped on the curse set and just went straight for the Stealth Rock Dragon Tail set, which been working so well even this gen, I mean Walling a poke and then you retaliate is so great. It's such a good feeling too when the people trying to get the like upper hand and switch out to another poke and just to be hit by another you know, dragon tail and switch out directly and getting like a bad position again. Um, the other move I really recommend you guys going with is consider that the only thing that is walling and like a big threat if you're gonna use that set, make sure to have heavy slam because there is no fair type that is heavy enough to. Uh, well, to deal with that, um, you can't learn Iron Head, sadly. It's a um, Gen 5 tutor move, so it doesn't work that well. And, well, Iron Tail can miss, and you don't want to miss an attack like that. And Jaraball, while being a, probably one of the strongest attacks on Steelix, it still is, well, lackluster because, let's face it, most fairies are rather slow, so you don't get that 120 base power. So it's too risky. It really is. Um, a little more story about Steelix, what can I say? Um, you know, when I first went to that Steel Gym uh, back in Gen 2, I had no idea how to deal with Steelix. Like, the typing was new, uh, did not, I thought I treated it as um, rocks and grass didn't work. I think I had Shikorita back then. Yeah, it was, it was really stressful. Um, I was obliterated that first time. And, well,. I still like, when I go against a Steelix, I always respect like what's coming because I know Steelix hits rather hard and I know it can take a lot of damage. You need to hit it specially and I mean I've seen new sets now that coming around here with Assault Vest Steelix. You know, if you can do that then this guy is off the charts really. Um, I've used Steelix for 72% of my battles. It was around a lot in the beginning. I have gone and tried to use other defensive walls because I... well, just to say it really, I don't want to bring the same pokes all the time. I'm saying that and using heal is like 90% of my battles. But yeah, I do believe that Steelix is one of the best special or defensive walls and I want to see if anybody else can even compare to that. And well, what can I say more here about Steelix? Nah, I, should, I, I, I mean, I don't need to, right? You, you guys know why I love this guy. Best defensive poke in the game. And I know you guys will disagree, but I won't. 
I mean, I love this guy. And it's been around my team since the end too. And I see no reason to stop actually using it. And I'm really glad it's in the NU now because that means that I can use it even more if I like to. So, yeah. <laughs> this was my top 10 then. Uh, if you guys stayed through this, I mean, we are in for like around 20 minutes now. If you guys like this, um, make sure to, you know, notify that and tell me that in the comments. Um, I can definitely do more lists. So I'm not too... Um, I mean, I liked it. I, I think it's great. <laughs> it's very relaxing. Um, and I'll try to, uh, next time, if you want me to do another list, I'll make sure to get some graphical content instead of pictures. Because, well... It does seem a little stale, so I'm actually sorry for that. But anyway guys, uh, thank you for joining this time. Don't forget to leave a like, and well... Bye.